Is this thing on? Okay. All right. We hear you. We've heard you loud and clear. And we're going to be changing the way that we do our GPU testing going forward because it's what you guys want to see. So we're doing exactly what you guys have asked for. So make sure you subscribe to see all of the newer stuff coming up rather than the stuff that I've got planned that's already been tested, which will make more sense when we get to it. But bear with us. We've got a lot of stuff going on in the background here. And the reason why the videos aren't coming out as frequently is because all of this stuff in the background is changing. So get keen because we are very, very, very excited to show you guys what we've been cooking. Right here is our GPU test bench that we use for all the GPU testing. However, the problem with this test bench is it's getting a little bit old. It's got a 12900K and 32 gigs of RAM. And I know what you're saying. Oh, it's not that old. Well, for testing the latest and greatest, it is. And I came up with an idea. Recently, we received another 14900K and we used it for this build here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extract the hardware from this build from the Height Y70 Touch build that we did last week. I'll put a link to that in the description if you wanna watch it, but I'm gonna use that hardware for the new GPU test bench. And I know what you might be thinking. Why don't you use the 7800X3D? Well, I've only got one of them and I have two 14900Ks. So it just makes sense if I utilize one of those for testing for you guys because I've got a little bit of a plan, ladies and gents. You guys have been loving our revisit content for our GPUs and our just our revisit content in general. So I'm gonna use this to show you what the hardware is like when we revisit it. Claire just asked me if her clicking and her working is going to annoy me. No, it'll be okay, Claire. That'll be annoying though. <laughs> All right, here's my rat's nest of a test bench. The reason why it's like this is because uh, it's kind of been pulled apart a couple times to test a few other things, but now that I've got this extra 14900K hardware, I was like, you know what, it's just time. This will be the new hardware. Uh, I guess we should pull it apart. Yeah, let's do that. One thing I want to do from the old test bench is harvest the drives. Typically with our test benches, I have three operating systems installed. Windows 11, whichever the latest version is, two Linux installs, one set up for NVIDIA GPUs and one set up for AMD GPUs. So you can see here we've got two Firecuda 520s. The great thing is when you build it the test bench like this to remove your motherboard, you just lift it up. I've decided that I'm going to keep this Fantex cooler that I've already got. Generally, I'll just let it float a little bit, figure out where the CPU fan header is. It's a bit tricky getting my fat old fingers in there sometimes. I'll plug in the 24 pin power connector and now we can line the board up. There we go. The board I went with was the Asus ROG Maximus Dark Hero. It's a Z790 board that supports 14th gen CPUs right out of the box. As for RAM, now in the build that I did in the Y70 Touch, I said that this was a 32 gig kit. I was wrong. I didn't pay attention to whatever kit this was. This is a 48 gig kit, and this is 8,000 mega transfer memory, and I think it's gonna get the job done, no problem. And for some of the other reasons why I picked this board, first of all, for me, one of the most important things when building a test bench is having a power button integrated into the motherboard. That way I don't need to wire up a power button or use a screwdriver to jump the headers on the motherboard. Especially for GPU testing, you wanna get your GPU out nice and quickly. You can press this button and it releases the latch, right? This is very, very important. And this has saved me so much time because the last board had it as well. But with these newer boards, the mechanism is a lot more refined and it's just a bit better in general. Over the years, we've used Carbonaut pads for all of our test benches for testing and stuff. And as you can see, this one is a little bit worse for wear. It's got a chunk taken out of it. Don't worry guys, I've ordered a new one, but this is enough for us to get the thing up and running for today. I don't want to use thermal paste for now. Uh, we never use thermal paste for these, by the way. This is how we do it. This is how we've always done it. And yeah, look at that big chunk taken out. That's okay, like it's, it's fine. As long as it's in the middle, it should be okay. Other than that, when you place the cooler down, you need to be a little bit careful because 
these pads are electrically conductive, unlike thermal paste. So just be a little bit careful with no movement. You don't want any movement and knowing me, I'm, I'll move it around. Okay, there we go. Tighten it up by hand because it makes it a lot easier if we need to loosen it later as well. I've decided to only install two drives on this test bench for now. So I'm gonna use one of the Seagate drives. And we'll use the other team group drive. And the reason why I'm using two different drives is when I'm identifying which drive has an operating system installed on it or which one I wanna do it for the initial setup, it's just gonna make it easier because it usually shows the model number. I put on a 1650 Super just to make sure this is all working and it's pretty reliable. <laughs> Crossing our fingers, let's see if it powers on. Well, that'll help if I turn the power supply on. All right, here we go. All right, will, will she post? It's gonna work. Yeah, it's gonna work. First things first, we wanna get some of the settings that should be set on these newer ASUS boards. It'll be AI overclock tuner or whatever. And we'll just set this to XMP1. That should be more than okay. Oh, you can see DDR5, 8,000, 40, 48. If you're buying, a system and building a PC, this is one of the first things you should do when you build is enable the memory profile. This can be a bit hit and miss with some memory, but this memory should be all good. The other thing you wanna check is if resizable bar or rebar is enabled out of the box. Usually it is on boards now, so we're just gonna double check it is on. And that is all of our settings that we need to worry about for now. Hit F10 and save. We're good to go. Okay, so we're gonna select this USB device here, I'm gonna do a clean Windows install. And the order to do this if you're running two operating systems is typically install Windows first and then your Linux distro because Linux distros typically have a bootloader and it's just gonna make it a lot easier. I have this drive set up to do a few things automatically like create user accounts and that stuff as well. This Windows install that I got here has, but we wanna go and install the LAN driver because it's got a whole bunch of stuff to install now. We're gonna open up Edge and do the best thing ever, use Edge to download Chrome. Well, here's a tool I've been using for a very long time. It's called Ninite. When my keyboard wants to work. Ninite.com. And basically what this allows you to do is download a bunch of things at the same time. So we want Steam. We want 7-zip, I want Chrome, and you click get your Ninite, and then it will download the file, and you open that installer, it'll download all those programs that you've just selected from that website in one go. I love how it assumes that I wanted Armory Crate installed. I'm gonna uninstall Armory Crate after this. Now that Windows is installed, let's have some fun with the real magic. We're gonna be installing Fedora Workstation 39. The thing is with our Linux testing recently, we've been testing a lot more with Fedora and we've found it to be a bit more consistent with our setup. We're gonna install Fedora. English, Australia, look, it already knows me. It already knows where I am. Fedora 39, the latest version came out like five days ago. System, installation, destination. I like that, it's got a ring to it. The team group drive doesn't have anything on it, which is why it says all of it is free. We're gonna use the whole disk. Select the disk and done. That's it, really. We don't need to do anything. It's gonna do all of its things. It's going to install Fedora. The installation is now done. This is why we always install our Linux distro second because you have the bootloader. I'm gonna start setup, turn off all of this stuff. We don't need any of that. Enable third-party repositories is a good one because for drivers and stuff, it makes it a lot easier. Not gonna in log into anything. As mentioned, we switched to Fedora a little while ago for our testing because we found it to be a lot more consistent with results and retesting, as well as ease of setup for us as well. Like I'm a Linux guy, but sometimes I just want things to be quick and clean. And when you're testing a whole bunch of GPUs at once, you just want it to be as consistent and as fast as possible when you're setting all that stuff up. So yeah, Fedora seems like the best new alternative. I have used Fedora quite a bit on the side, like not in videos, but I figured let's just jump, switch to a different distro. And it's something that you guys recommended to us as well. 
and we found it to be more than competent for all the testing that we want to do here with Linux on the channel. It also uses much newer kernels and that makes it a lot easier when there's GPUs that are coming out that haven't been released yet and sometimes that we won't have drivers and a lot of the time they'll have kernel compatibility where we don't have to fluff about doing weird things to get drivers working too. As for the stuff that we install in Windows, we keep it as clean and as simple as possible because we want those results to be as high as possible to show you guys what the best case scenario is with all new GPUs and new hardware that comes out. However, there is another reason why I picked this motherboard because it has Thunderbolt. We've just received a bunch of new Thunderbolt hardware that we wanna test and we wanna do videos on. And instead of this just being used for GPU testing, I can do all that Thunderbolt testing as well. So we've got a QNAP NAS that's arrived that we're gonna be testing very, very shortly. So make sure you're subscribed to see that. And that's a Thunderbolt NAS, something that we haven't really covered here on the channel before. We've got a lot of really interesting revisits coming up for some older GPUs you guys have been asking about because everything is so expensive. There are lots of GPUs out there that are worth considering. We're gonna cover them individually so you can see what the full story is in both Windows and Linux. And that's really the point of upgrading our test bench is to keep this all as current as possible and I know the 14900K may be out of a lot of people's price range but it gives us the maximum performance but I need to ask you guys something if you do want to see us test with lower CPUs with GPUs to see what the difference is like let us know we can probably organize something with that as well we've just bought a new house so we've got all that stuff going on in the background so if you see a bit of a drop in videos at the moment that's only because we're organizing our life right and that's what happens and if you want to see me organizing my life a little bit more you can watch this video up here also i'll get that one right sometime in the future and make sure you're subscribed and all that stuff why can't i ever get that right it's the right hand nicholas the, 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 it, it, it lives there, right? That's the video right there in that box, see? Watch that video. You might find it interesting.